Well, hey there, everybody. Good afternoon. It's afternoon here, so obviously. Okay. How's everybody doing? How's your week been? I woke up to a couple of um, comments on one of my other videos um, that seemed a little cranky. So I hope that you all are doing well. I hope you're staying hydrated and getting enough rest. It's not always easy, is it? Um, if there's something that's making you cranky, I hope I really hope that you're able to get it resolved with a minimum of fuss. I sincerely do. Life is too short, right? Okay, so somebody said I take too long to get to the point, which I mean, it's YouTube, you know. I mean, have you watched a YouTube video? A lot of people take longer than I do. But anyway, that is not the point of this video, is it? This video is about Japanese live action television shows. And that is because I'm currently really into Japanese live action TV shows. So I'm going to detail here a few that I think are worth checking out. There, cut to the chase. I can do this. Now, a lot of Japanese television shows are uh, manga adaptions or are adaptions of like... Korean shows? Korea adapts from Japan and Japan adapts from Korea when it comes to television shows. It's a very common thing. Okay, so I'm going to start with Thus Spoke Kishibe Rohan. A quick apology ahead of time for all my pronunciations. I'm sure they're going to be terrible. I'm going to do the best I can. So I'm, I'm sorry, Japan and Japanese people. Okay, so Thus Spoke Kishibe Rohan is a manga adaption. The character is originally a brief character from Jojo's Bizarre Adventure. And the title actually translates as Kishibe Rohan does not move in Japanese. This is because of his special superpower, his special ability, which is, uh, I don't know if they actually called it that in the show. It's called the stand ability. And this is the Heaven's Door trick. He uses that to, um, basically, it knocks people unconscious, and he's able to read their brains like a book, literally. The pages open up on their face, and he's able to scan through them and learn more about this person and their thoughts. Since it is like a book, he is able to write in it, so therefore he can change things about their personality if he wants to, and he can change their motivations and and other things. There are limits to this power, if, but generally that's if he confronts a stronger power. Basically, with this power comes very great responsibility. Now, there are different episodes based on the manga series. There's also a movie, which happens to be the first one that I watched, and I didn't realize it was a series until they started popping up in my feed. The movie is Rohan at the Louvre. This is based on the experience of author Hirohiko Araki. He had uh, strips of Jojo exhibited at the Louvre in 2009. Series 1 had three episodes, the stories Millionaire Village, DNA, and Kushigara. Series 2 had The Run, Mutsukabe Hill, and From Behind. Next came Hot Summer Martha and Rock, Paper, Scissors Boy in Series 3. Now, most recently was a one-off episode, Poaching Seashore, also based on the manga, I believe. What I thought was interesting when I was doing research for this, I found out that several off-screen character voices were provided by Takahiro Sakurai. He is the voice actor for Kishibe Rohan in the original anime version. Now, you can find Kishibe Rohan on Amazon. Quite a few of these are on Amazon because Amazon has a pretty good Japanese TV selection. Netflix is it's, it's getting there, little bit by little bit. Next up, No Activity, also to be found on Amazon. This is an interesting one. I discovered it. I watched it. I loved it. Then I found out that it's not based on an, a manga or anything like that. It is based on an Australian TV show. This show is incredibly popular. To date, it has also had an Italian version, an Egyptian version, and even an American version, which had three, four, no, four seasons. It had quite a few people on it, too, like, like familiar people. Tim Meadows, Amy Sedaris. It had Patrick Bramble, who was the star of the Australian one. He made the trip to be in that. And I just think it's funny how I completely missed all this. I had no idea. <laughs> no Activity, the Japanese version, stars Itsushi Toyokawa and Tomoya Nakamura. No Activity is a comedy 
It is about two bored cops on a stakeout outside a warehouse. Also, we follow the dispatchers at the station and a pair of not-so-bright villains inside the warehouse along with their kidnapped victim. It's more hilarious than it sounds. <laughs> Next up, Lady Girls. Lady Girls, as far as I could find, is an original drama. This is one of those kind of basic-sounding plots, three older quote-unquote women in Japan navigate life and love and their careers. These three friends, it seems, are always unlucky in love. It's like they give all their luck to their partners. This stars Ryoko Shinohara as a 40, oh my goodness, not 40, year old business executive. And it also stars Yosuke Eguchi as a jaded romantic drama writer. Now this could be fairly run of the mill, but the writing is really good and the cast absolutely sparkles. It is Definitely recommended. If you can find it, looking up the term lady girls, even television drama, is <laughs> very difficult on Google. But it is possible that you can find it. I did. Next entry. Speaking of Amazon, My Undead Yokai Girlfriend is fairly new to Amazon. It is an Amazon original. Uh, all the ones that are Amazon originals have more of a budget. Uh, Japanese TV shows, it seems, do not typically have a lot of money thrown at them or a lot of time in which to film. So you have to take that into consideration when watching it too. An American, it seems very cheaply made, and I know my husband, for example, writes it off just because of that, but I, I look past it because you work with what you've got. And very often the scripts are pretty good, the direction and the acting is really good, so you appreciate it for what it has to offer. So anyway, my undead yokai girlfriend. Does this count if I've only watched the first episode? Um, for me, the first episode was so good that yes, yes it does. This stars Hayato Sono and Ai Yoshikawa. In the show, Tadashi is a lonely student who casts a spell to find love, unwittingly summoning a yokai and binding himself to her for life. No activity and this one get a little more grown up than some of the others, so bear that in mind if you're watching it with younger people in the house. Hey, how about those Amazon originals? I've said I had a few. Tokyo Alice. This one is based on a manga by Toriko Chia. It's another one where uh, the friends navigate life and love and careers and etc. in the big city. These girls are younger, they are 420 somethings. It stars the absolutely effervescent Mizuki Yamamoto and also Ryohei Otani. It's a very funny and also dramatic show, and also I want their apartment. On the dramatic side, we have the storyline of Mizuho. Her boyfriend is abusing her. She tries to keep it a secret, but her friends invariably find out, and they immediately support her. They work to get her out of the relationship and keep her safe. If there's one issue I have with the show, it's the storyline of the friend Rio. Rio is an absolutely great character in every respect. They give her a crush on her friend Fu, who is the lead character, and the situation cannot be resolved as she would like it to because Fu does not reciprocate her feelings. Fu is one of the girlfriends, right? Then Rio ends up settling into a relationship with a man and getting pregnant and she's fine with all that. So here's the thing. They don't out and out say that Rio is bisexual. So therefore, it kind of comes across as though they're saying that, hey, if you're a lesbian and it doesn't work out, just get in a relationship with a man and all will be well. Um, so maybe that's not what they're saying, but just a little clarification on that point would have been nice. So anyway, other than, so anyway, other than that, um, everything's great. It is a great show. Samurai Cat. This one I found on Amazon, but it is not an Amazon original. And unfortunately, I never finished watching it because Amazon took it down partway before I could finish. So I cannot tell you for sure where to find this one. But, you know, keep an eye out. If you do ever find it, watch it because it's so cute and funny. This stars Kizuki Kitamura as a samurai. Kyutaro is without a master. He's fallen on hard times and he takes whatever odd jobs people throw his way. He is hired to kill a cat, but ends up saving it instead. So he and the cat become friends and he also has to hide it and protect it at any cost. It's just a thoroughly charming little sitcom. Alice in Borderland. 
This one you may have seen on Netflix. It's been on there a while. This is the second Japanese television show I've seen with a main character named Arus, who is male. So it seems like that's a popular male name in Japan? So anyway, this one is on Netflix, and like the Amazon Originals, it benefits from a decent budget. It even managed to wangle two seasons, effectively finishing its story. Although there has been talk about a third season, but it doesn't look like that's going to come to fruition. But even so, two seasons for a Netflix original is freaking amazing. Alice in Borderland stars Kento Yamazaki and Tao Tsushia. Although I do feel the standout is Nijiro Urakami in the White Rabbit role. It's directed by Shinsuke Sato, who also directed the live-action Bleach film. This is based on a manga, originally published in, starting in 2010 by Haro Aso. Arusu is a video game nerd who finds himself and his friends abruptly transported to a strange Tokyo. It's either that or it's their actual Tokyo and everyone's disappeared and everything's changed. It's not made clear for quite some time which one it is. Either way, there are these strange airships flying around, patrolling the region, and they force people to participate in life and death challenges. Predictably, Arusu, his video game knowledge is an asset, and he does end up beating the game, but what awaits the winner? This is one with a lot of twists and turns, it's difficult to figure out what the answer to it all is, and when it's finally revealed it was one I did not find disappointing. Well, we're on Netflix. He's expecting a Netflix original, an adaption of a manga by Eri Sakai, Hiyama Kentaro no Ninshin, complete with budget. This stars Takumi Saito and Juri Ueno. The story is about an ad executive who, although he is getting older, he isn't yet worried about it. He's complacent in his life, successful in his career, and non-monogamous love life, and he's not looking for anything to tie him down. However, this story is set in a world just like ours, except cisgender men have somehow, it's never explained, and that's the only thing I found disappointing, is I would have liked at least a brief nod to an explanation as to how this is happening. Um, anyway, in recent years, cisgender men have uh, rarely been able to become pregnant. So our lead character, Kentaro, a one-night stand leaves him in the expecting state of the title and having to confront responsibility for possibly the first time in his life, or at least the first time in a long time. This one was very enjoyable, and I expected it to be more popular than it was. But then I reckoned without the internet mentality that people tend to judge things before they see them or even find out anything about them. And this one was labeled and even condemned as a trans show, which that's not what it's about at all. And first off, who cares if it was? And second of all, no, it's not an art. So in any case, I recommend it, watch it and find out for yourself. My Love from the Stars. This one I found on Amazon. It is not an Amazon original. It does not have their budget, but it is extremely cute. This one is based on a Korean drama, My Love from the Star, singular. Also very popular in certain other countries. It became very popular in China and the Philippines, both of which made their own version. China um, kind of took the original, edited it, and made it into a movie, and they released it in theaters. In 2017, there was a Philippine remake done, and in 2019, there came a Thai version. There was going to be an American version uh, that started in 2014, but it was shelved for unknown reasons. The Japanese remake came out in 2022. This stars, again, Mizuki Yamamoto and also Sota Fukushi. An alien comes to Earth on a 400-year mission to observe and then go back to his home planet to report. On arrival, he meets a young girl who later dies, and he always regrets not being able to save her. In modern times, his 400 years are almost up when he meets a spoiled actress who reminds him of the girl he used to know. This is a common sort of theme in um, at least several Japanese TV shows I've seen. This love story is also balanced with a murder not quite mystery. Um, and the guy who played the villain is apparently a pop star. Um, and I, I honestly thought he was a bit of a weak link because the villain was fairly one note. I'm a bad guy and that's about it. Um, however, however, everything else about the show is very cute indeed. I was laughing out loud quite a bit.
and it's also so sweet and poignant. Ah, Fukiyaro Honpo. This one is based on another manga, The Fukiyaro Family Shop, by Yuchi Yayomi. Three sisters handle life, love, and the fact that one of them must prepare to inherit the family sweet shop. And the show is sweet indeed, but it's not saccharine. And you can definitely root for the down-to-earth heroine. This stars Hayato Ichihara and Akari Hayami. Boku no Ita Jikan. Roughly translated, this is Time I Was In. It can also be roughly translated as The Hours of My Life. Okay, it's about time we had a tearjerker. I don't go for melodrama very much, but this one is a tearjerker and it's worth it. This one came out in 2014, and as far as I know, it is an original story. It is also an original Japanese television show, not much of a budget, but again, again, this one is very good. Sawara Takuto is ending university and heading for the work world. He has trouble finding a job and other run-of-the-mill mild difficulties, but all that pales when he is diagnosed with ALS. He doesn't want to succumb to despair, so he determines to live his life as fully as possible until the end. This is more than just a typical melodrama. It may or may not be fully accurate. I don't have the life experience to say. But it definitely does seem like it's trying its best to be. The situation shown seem fairly realistic, and the emotions are heartfelt. The actors do a great job, and the presentation of everything is considerate. This show stars Mikako Tabe and ha Haruma Miura, who uh, unfortunately died a few years ago. R.I.P. He was a great talent if this show is anything to go by and shall be missed. Kids go to spec. This is one I just happened to get on DVD, so unfortunately I don't know if there's any place to watch online. I also, in my research, found a bunch of spec TV shows, so I don't know if these are the actual, if that's the actual series, or if it should be under Keizuku. It was kind of confusing looking that up, because this one in particular is just listed as Keizuku everywhere I look. I didn't see anything showing whether this came from a manga or not. It seems as though it would have, but... Again, I couldn't find anything saying, so if you know, just let me know in the comments. In the show, a straight-laced career cop is transferred to the Department for Unusual Crimes and partnered with a genius loose cannon who also happened to have worked once with the X-Files Department for the FBI. Yes, it's a familiar storyline, but it's brought to be fresh by the leads. And they make it so fun, especially Erika Toda, who is a revelation. I love her character. The storylines vary from straight-up murder mysteries to ones with a supernatural kick. The issue with this one, and there is one unfortunately, the one partner sometimes reacts with violence towards his other partner, and yes, that's the male partner reacting with violence toward the female partner, so there's an issue there. Um, it's like he might smack her with something or throw a book at her. It, yeah. So I was able to look past that and enjoy the show. It is a fun little show otherwise. But if that's something that you can't look past and I understand, then that's something you should know about. Next up, we are scooting back to Netflix for a budgeted original. This is Samurai Gourmet. This is based on an essay slash manga by Masayuki Kusumi. The show is about a fellow who has retired and is casting about for something to do with his time. He ends up going on a food discovery tour of local places and likens his journey to that of a traveling samurai. It's a most charming story with great work by the leads. The star is Naoto Takenaka, who just off the strength of this, I will watch anything that man is in, he has my heart, and also Honami Suzuki as his most excellent wife. She is so cool. Next up, I'm probably going to mess up this pronunciation most seriously. Kyoen NG is also known as not co-starring. It co-stars, ironically, Kiichi Nakai and Kyoka Suzuki. This is an original Japanese produced drama, and it is pretty hilarious. <laughs> It's a well-developed story with a very able cast. The two actors star as actors. They not only used to be uh, co-starring on a popular TV show, which is still popular in the nowadays, but they were an item off screen. Unfortunately, he cheated on her, which led to their very public breakup. Years later, they're both still very popular actors, but they haven't worked together because she has still not forgiven him. Now, of course, 
they have been cast together in another drama. Will they be able to forget their past or put it behind them or face their past and resolve their issues and all that sort of thing? It sounds very dramatic and there are dramatic parts, but mostly this is a very funny show with very solid leads. In the home stretch, a Netflix adaption original thing type of thing that you might have noticed because it's been on Netflix for quite a while. Midnight Diner. The series began in 2009 as a manga by Yaro Abe. Also, a movie version was made in 2014. In this show, a close-mouthed chef plies his trade at his tiny eatery, which is popular in the wee hours of the morning. Action focuses on his diners and their stories. Many of these characters recur. The food they are eating also usually figures into their stories, it being something of importance to that particular person. Eventually, we also learn more about the chef as well. This show is comfort food in streaming form. I looked forward to it every night I was able to watch it, and no, it's not a binge type of show. It's one where you watch each episode and digest it. I don't know, we're pushing the metaphor, but I mean, really, that's what it is. The show stars Kaoru Kobayashi as the chef, this one is another one that worked the other way around. It wasn't inspired by other ones. It inspired other versions. There was a Korean version entitled Late Night Restaurant and the Chinese Midnight Diner. Okay, let's wrap it up. One last one. It is on Netflix. I don't think it's original. I, I don't know. I want to say I read somewhere that it was, but then again, it's not the budgeted looking type of thing that we are accustomed to with other shows. This was put out in 2019 and is based on a manga by Noriko Sasaki. This is an adorable comedy series about the goings-on behind the scenes at a news station. It focuses largely on their new female hire who is a quirky girl to say the least. Nobody thinks she's going to make it, but of course her different way of looking at situations and solving problems ends up gaining her respect. One little issue is that several co-workers really look down on her and refer to her as a, quote, idiot, unquote. I can't tell if this is the, if this is a translation choice or if it's the actual meaning of the word, uh, but either way, it seems a little harsh. But otherwise, absolutely freaking adorable. Watch it. Even for the credits crawl at the end. Oh, watch that. It's, it's fun. Stay tuned, stars Kyoko Yoshine and Hiroki Ijima. And that is all I've got for right now. I'm sure I've talked for long enough. <laughs> now, there are plenty of other Japanese TV shows I've watched and enjoyed, but those would be the top ones. What are your top ones? Have you got any top ones? Or have I opened up a brand new world for you to explore and enjoy? Or not? You'd have to watch them to find out if you like them or not. And hey, if you're not into Japanese TV shows, that's fine. What are you into? I'd like to know. Maybe it's something I can check out. What do you recommend? Okay, so again, I've talked for long enough. I will wrap this up now. And I will go and watch movies and TV shows and read books. And I will see you next week. Bye!